Welcome back, Shaloners. Well, despite it being a quarantine, celebrities seem to still be providing us with so much fodder. And today, we're going to talk about our own personal fountain of lessons, Justin Bieber. And I know some of you guys are like, I'm sick of hearing about Justin Bieber. Girl, I know. But listen, this is why we need to talk about him because we all have a Justin IRL, a fuckboy we want to change, a dude we're trying to save, an ex who comes back and says that things are going to be different, a boy we're dating who used to be a complete slut and now he says he's reformed. Justin is such an archetype of the kind of people we deal with. So I know, man, he's just an endless, he's the, he's the goose that keeps on laying the golden eggs, the golden eggs of wisdom. So we're gonna crack one open and scramble up some lessons. This metaphor is getting away from me. We're gonna talk today about how to be okay with your man's slutty past. Is we're gonna break it down so that you can feel a bit more comfortable in your relationship and actually see the blessings in it. So while today we're gonna talk about how to get comfortable with your man's past, Tomorrow, we are gonna be back talking about how to be comfortable with your own past. And some of those lessons are gonna be repeated here. So, you know, get them, get them in, let them embed. But tomorrow we're gonna break it down even more because letting go of regret and letting go of shame is really difficult and honestly, not something that people talk a lot about, but we will. But before we get started, I wanna remind you that if you have a love question of your own, you wanna to talk to me privately, find me on my website, shallonlester.com, and click get help. Also, if you wanna book a video shout out with me for a pep talk, a friend's birthday, just answer a question that way, find me on Cameo at ShallonXO, and be sure to follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO. You guys suggested this topic, I put it out there to you. You always come up with the best ideas. I love the feedback, so let's get down to it. But first, yeah, I'm, I'm back in New York, right? Like I'm not in California anymore back in my old background because I'm moving. I wouldn't have just come on back to the contagion zone if I, you know, and leave like a beautiful suburban house. But I'm moving and this is just like how the timing worked out and you kind of can't stop it. Where am I moving? Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you yet. Just because I don't wanna jinx it and I, usually moving isn't like a jinxable thing, but because of a pandemic, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of stuff's going on, but I can tell you that it's going to be a big lifestyle shift. It's just, I'm leaving New York City and I've lived here since I graduated. This is all I've known as an adult is the city, the big, big city life, you know, that glitter ball, it girl city thing. And I just kind of felt like I needed a change. You know, I just felt called to do something different and I'm I'm crushed to leave my friends. Like, I don't care about leaving the city. I am gonna miss my apartment, but it's my friends. I'll do a whole video on moving and why I decided to move, because it's it's a little bit deeper than all of this. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll share with you the new vibe once I get all settled and everything. But after I move here, I'm gonna go back to California, so you'll see me back there. Don't worry, more calf dance. You think I was done. I hadn't even opened them all. The, oh, yeah. So let's talk about Justin. So Justin and Haley have been doing this Facebook live stream sort of thing like a lot and talking about their relationship a lot. And I don't think that's ultra advisable because we've been seeing a lot of red flags about them. And I could probably do a video every single, I could do a video about every one of their broadcasts. I don't because I know there's like Bieber fatigue. I, I get that you guys don't need that much Bieber in your life. I do, I need that much Haley in my life, but. But this one, when he talked about virginity and sex, really stood out. So let's, this is what he said in the course of their conversation. If I could go back and not have to face some of the bad hurt that I went through, I probably would have saved myself for marriage. He said, as crazy as that sounds, sex can be kind of confusing when you're just being sexually active with someone. We went there. It's just true. I probably would have saved myself for marriage. Hmm. Hmm. So Haley, Haley, like who to me has, I can assume she has had far fewer sexual partners, you know, like Justin has like hoed his way around the world. Haley, I mean, she, Justin might've been her first, you know, and that's why she was so like, not obsessed with him. I don't think she's obsessed with him, but that's why she fell in love with him, you know? <clears throat> and she said, I do agree with the fact that being physical with someone can make things more confusing, but she was actually like, no, saving for marriage. You know, she, she didn't wholeheartedly agree with that, which is interesting. And she said, she went on to talk about them getting back together. I think I always knew if we did ever work things out and get back together, it was going to be a situation where it was very serious and we were going to get married or it was gonna to lead to that. I didn't necessarily know what the timeline was going to be. I just trusted and I think it was such a huge leap of faith. And I just trusted the people I knew who had watched me go through the whole journey with him, without him and then back together with him. 
We had gotten back together and I had seen how much he changed and how different he was in terms of his demeanor, the way he carried himself, the way he was explaining to me what he had been doing with his life and just where he was, was different than I had ever seen. Um, so she, this was like kind of a, a mishmash of stuff she had said on the Hillsong channel. I'm just like smushing it down for clarity's sake. But we, I'm going to do another video on how to know if a fuck boy's changed. I know I've done like five of them, but guys, guys, we're all still dealing with it because that is the central question that I get. You know, it's like, how do I know this situation is going to be different? So we can break that down in another one. But Haley seems to have a very Zen approach to Justin's past. Like, you know, this all added up. And I knew that if he came back to me, he really was going to be different. And I was going to be able to tell that he was different. But again, we can save that for the has a fuck boy change thing. So one of you guys said, it seems almost like Justin is shading Selena. Like, oh, I wish I could erase that whole, like, what, five year, however long they were together. It was just so messy and on and off. Like, if I could erase that, I would have saved myself for marriage. Like, if my college boyfriend, who was a virgin when we met, if he said that, I would have been like, well, fuck me very much. Thank you. That's mean and hurtful. This begs the question. And of course, my bangs are making me crazy. We're back in New York, back where my bangs make me insane. What do you do if you're dating someone who has a very messy past? Maybe you were part of that past, like Haley was part of Justin's, and you like were crushed under the wheels of it. Or maybe you've just heard some things about him, or maybe he's told you some things. It's really difficult when a guy opens up and we're like, uh-huh, and we, we don't want to poke someone in their emotional underbelly when they're exposing it to us. Hey, here's something I went through. Here's who I used to be. And then we're like, boop, I don't like it. That is a recipe for a really, really bad relationship. You know how we know this? Boys do it to us, don't they? Don't they? I had a guy ghost me when I said I had a bad day. Like when I wasn't suddenly sunshine and pom-poms and rainbows, he was like, oh, I don't know. And it was like hard for me to, it's hard for me to open up to boys and for me to be like, today was a really, really hard day. And I wasn't, it wasn't like this. It was like two sentences and I never heard from him again. I was like, you motherfucker. Like, this is why I don't, this is why I open up to my girlfriends and not to guys. This is why I have a kind of a dim view of boys being trustworthy because of shit like this. And we don't want to create that in other people because then we just get a society of fuckery, right? We just get a society of toxicity and people who aren't opening up. And it's like this, it's very adversarial. It creates a very, very combative dynamic. And that does not lead to a lot of happiness. Peace versus victory, right? Which we always talk about. So when a guy is opening up to you, let's say it's that, you don't want to be like, well, you, that, you should be ashamed of yourself. Four girls in one day. I dated a dude who slept with seven girls in a 24 hour period. <gasps> Gross. And you know, we don't want to like poke someone for that because then they're not gonna open up. And if they don't feel comfortable opening up about something that's a little bad, why would they feel comfortable opening up about something that's good? I love you, I wanna be with you, I wanna marry you. I wouldn't. Trust is trust and it works for good things and it works for bad things and support is support. If you don't accept me at my worst, you don't get me at my best. That stupid meme coming back to haunt us, but it's true. Like, oh, with the dude who goes to me, I'm like, you only want me when I'm just this like, this fun little party machine for you. And it's like, I'm actually a whole person. I'm a whole person and not every moment of my life is wonderful and as my, potential prospective partner, I thought maybe, you would have like gotten that memo. But now I wonder if you're just kind of a shallow one dimensional person all the way around. Maybe you don't have a large emotional variance. I do. And I need someone who's going to be there for that. And again, that's who we have to be in a relationship if we want that mirrored back to us. In this day and age, we are truly living in the golden age of two things. TV shows about fish tanks and storage units and fuck boys, I guess that's, that's three things. Fuck boys are ruling the world. Do you know why they're ruling the world? Because we have let them. We have let them. We have created this. Every dick pic Snapchat that you reply to, every you up that you allow, we teach people how to treat us. And there's a lot in this world that we do not allow, we have not permitted or promoted. The gender wage gap, abortion rights, 
things like that, like human trafficking. We didn't contribute to that. We can contribute to this. And maybe if we start from the ground up, things change all the way around. My point is, if your man has a fuckboy past, that's almost like just, you know, run of the mill at this point. I'm hard pressed to find a guy who hasn't done something fuckboyish, who hasn't really, who hasn't ghosted a girl, who hasn't wounded someone in that way, who hasn't strung someone along. Like this is simply how people are starting to behave. And again, we have to do what we can to combat that, but people are gonna, people are gonna do what they do. Players gonna play, fuck boys gonna fuck. So my point is you're probably going to date someone who's got some sort of a past that you aren't exactly loving, not loving it. But I personally would rather know what I'm dealing with than think that I'm dealing with the dude who's only ever done wonderful things. Because look, for two reasons. Number one, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And I want to know the evidence. I want to know the data. I want to know the data points. Oh, you ghosted your fiance? That's interesting. Or oh, you, you were a virgin until you met your college girl? Okay, like data points that skew out in a different way. And number two, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And I believe that if people hide a lot of, of their history or put a different spin on it, now part of it could be like, it's simply none of our business and we'll get to that. But part of it could be like, they haven't dealt with that and they don't really think it's anything bad. Mm, I mean, yeah, I like stopped talking to her and before that we were talking about like moving in together, but I mean, I'm sure she's fine. I'm sure she doesn't care. Again, the past behavior could become the future behavior if people don't deal with things. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. And that's not just us, that's other people as well, obviously. So let's say you're dating a dude who really was a hoe, just ho hoeing as far as the hoe could hoe. Hoes in different area codes. I personally would rather date someone who used to be a hoe than who used to be like, than who doesn't have as much sexual experience. Why? Sex is like anything else. You have to practice to be good at it. Like anything, like cooking, like moving, like doing YouTube videos, like playing the saxophone. In fact, let's use, let's use music as, as the analogy here. Maroon 5, love that band, fucking great. Do you think that when, when Adam Levine joined that band or when they all got together and joined a band, formed a band together, do you think the drummer, do we know anybody else in Maroon 5 besides Adam Levine? No, it's like, his name might just be drummer at this point. Do you think the drummer was like, wait a minute, you, wait a minute, you played guitar with other people before us, wait a minute, what do you mean? What do you mean you were in a in marching band? You, you played before us and he's gonna be like, yeah, that's like how I got good at it. Like I played, I played. And sometimes I even play by myself when no one else is around, just me playing it. No one, no other musician would be like, <laughs> no, we're not gonna be in a band with you. This needs to be your first band, the first time you picked up a guitar and you better pick it up and just be fucking great at it. You better be Grammy level great right out of the gate. And if you aren't, that means you don't love this band. That means you don't even love music and you certainly don't love me. That would be crazy. We don't go to a restaurant and are shocked, shocked that the chef has served other people before. I want the chef to serve other people. I want them to do a soft opening where they test all the dishes and have a little panel and tweak all the recipes so that by the time I taste what they're offering, it's delicious. Yummy, one might say. So dating a dude with a past is, I think, truly a good thing because not only is it something like you have to practice to be good at, let's all remind ourselves that a man's past really isn't any of our business. And I know, I know, I just said, hey, I wanna know. Just because I want to know doesn't mean I have a right to know. Because even when I said I wanna know so that I can log those data points, that's just a pretty little term for judging him. That's the truth, you know? You would not want a man to throw a light on every bad thing you have ever done. And you're probably saying, well, I haven't like, I didn't sleep with seven people in one day. Okay, maybe you were a dick to like the unpopular dorky girl in third grade. Maybe you feel bad about that. Maybe you screamed at your mom and said horrible things. Maybe you've like kissed a dude that your friend really liked. Would you want someone like drudging that up all the time? No, it's things that make you feel ashamed, things you've learned from, things you won't do again. 
So you are allowed to have your past be the past and for your lessons to kick in and take effect and let you move forward, and so is he. And just because I want the data on which to judge someone doesn't mean I should have it, right? This isn't just my world and everyone else is living in it. Like a man, a friend, a coworker, anybody, your parents, they are entitled to their own private story. They are entitled to live their life, go through the mistakes, go through the up and downs, learn from it and come out the other side. I might want to see the history of a restaurant's health, you know, health report, like sanitation report, so I can be like, mm, well, in 1994, they had some rats. But do I actually, in essence, want a better dining experience? Isn't that actually what I want, right? I'm saying that I need these data points so that I can like calculate how to have a better dining experience, but really, what I want is the chef to have learned from all of their mistakes, the not clean countertops, too much paprika in this, and just come to me fully formed. Come to me ready in the big leagues. Here is your gourmet meal. I have worked out all the kinks and you know what, girl? You don't even have to worry about how it went. You don't have to see literally how the sausage is made. You just gotta enjoy the finished product. So maybe if you enjoy the finished product of your man, if you have a healthy relationship, if he's good in bed, which takes practice, if he's communicative, if he's okay with his past, then let's let the past be the past. It is not our place to judge, even if we want to, and even if we think that's going to insulate us from future hurt, let me tell you something, it won't. It won't. Because what I was saying, you can't change what you don't acknowledge, and future behavior is past behavior. That is a very slippery slope to codependency. I know because I've been there. Because when I hear about a man's shady, wormy past, my, given my personality and just, I mean, look at what I do for a living. I wanna jump in there and diagnose. I wanna fix, we'll have you work through this. Well, did you see how that relates to your mother? Okay, but blah, 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 blah. That's not my role. That clicks me into this Shallon Lester Emotional Rehab Center for fucked up men role. And I don't like that. We are not rehabs for broken men. We're not. We're not rehabs for restaurants or bands. You're not gonna buy an album of Maroon 5 if their guitars are all off tune and the sound isn't mixed. You're gonna be like, you come to me when you know what you're doing. Don't serve me this food, it's not cooked, right? We demand the finish line, the finished product in every other category of our life. And if, the, if food, if music, if whatever is not at that finish line, we don't engage with it, do we? I'm not back in the kitchen, well maybe just a little more salt. I'm not doing that. I leave, I disengage. But yet with people, we plug in. Oh, I have to figure out why he did this and I have to help him fix it and maybe he should reach out to that ex-girlfriend and give her closure. Maybe not. Maybe if we look at this man and you're like, you're not a finished product. None of us are. None of us are completely finished. Life is a journey, obviously. But if we think, oh, the past is very much with us in this relationship, it is very much a specter over our, our dynamic. Get up, push back from that restaurant table, get out of the chair and go eat somewhere else. Justin and Haley, I don't think Justin is a finished product. I think he's very much on the path and you know I root for them like because they love each other so much and I they want so much to make this work and I think that that is honestly very rare. I talk to you guys all the time and you're like I want to go to therapy and I want to plug in and, and my partner, my boyfriend, my husband just doesn't. It's like girl then he doesn't. Then he just doesn't. Justin does. He does seem to want to be better. Whether or not he's capable of that I don't know but he's certainly going to be making more progress than someone who doesn't really care at all. But it is obvious to me that his past is still that specter over their relationship. I think these two got together way too soon, way too soon. I mean, he had just, he had been back together with Selena like months prior, <laughs> months prior. It's crazy. And I'm sure she thought, oh my God, this is it. We're getting back together. It's like, just kidding, I'm married here to wild one. So his past is still very much a pall over their relationship. And, <sighs> In that sense, how do you not judge a man by his past? He's the one introducing it into evidence. He's the one talking about it. He's got the crazy ex-girlfriend making songs called Burfriend. You know, like it's, how do you move on from that? But I think what's important to realize about a man's past is 
Wisdom we get from a country music song, Rascal Flats. God bless the broken road that led me straight to you. That song is so good. And it was like the number one wedding song, I think for like three years after it came out because it just goes to show it's so true. It's like all the long lost dreams, all the broken hearts, they led me to you. They added up to something that was better because they were lessons and they were things pointing me away from something that actually wasn't good for me, but I didn't know it at the time and towards something that was ultimately a better fit. So when you look at your man and he was a fuck boy, like I want to date someone who has the lessons of a reformed fuck boy. I want to date someone who knows that ghosting a girl makes him feel shitty about himself. Not just, well, I know I'm not supposed to do it. It's like, no, I have done it and I felt gross. And when I think about it, I feel gross again. And I want that, not shame, but shame, to be a little close to the surface so that he's like, a little walk in the line, very constantly aware that X behavior on his part yields a Y remote emotional result. Okay, I have a one night stand, I get laid, but it makes me feel kind of hollow and empty inside. I want a man who knows that, you know? It's like, okay, he's with me, not just by default, because he doesn't know any better, and he's gonna have this like, I gotta go sow my wild oats moment, no, I want a man who's with me because he's done the soft opening, he's done the rounds, he's done the critiques, he's done the practice laps. I am not anyone's practice lap. I'm not a dress rehearsal. You come correct or you don't come at all, and I mean that in all possible ways. So overall, if you're stressing about your man's past, remember a few things. Make sure it is his past. If the past, if this is a Justin Haley situation where the past is looming large and he's still engaging in exactly the same behaviors he seems to have left behind, it isn't the past at all. And so what you're feeling isn't jealousy, it's not insecurity, it's your intuition saying, this is going to go bad. This is going to go up in a ball of flames. Why am I telling myself that I am so unique that I'm gonna change this guy when I'm probably not future behavior? past behavior, future behavior, right? We gotta always assume that we're not exactly the outlier. We're not the exception to the rule, we are the rule. If he has been consistently jerky to women and you have gotten a hold of him and he hasn't exhibited any kind of awareness about this, just, nah, baby, I, I'd never do that to you. What, I'll, I'll see you on my website when you click get help, I'll see, I'll see you soon. Because that's a recipe for disaster. But let's say that he does seem different. This is what you need to remember. His past is none of your business. Truly, girl, it's not. And if you truly don't feel that way, you're immature and you shouldn't be in a relationship. These are just the facts. But I don't think you are that way. Because if you're watching this channel, you're pretty mature, you're a bad bitch, and you should be in relationships. Maybe a few at a time. Ho it up. You allowed to be a hoe too. I want you to also remember, again, sex is like anything else. You have to practice to be good at it. So if you like the skills he's bringing to the table, Kind of like acknowledge me like, all right, I don't want to think about how he acquired these skills. Just like I don't want to think about Maroon 5 playing completely out of tune for three different songs or writing cringeworthy tunes that never got released on tune album. I just want to think about the hits. I want to think about the number one single. Same in your relationship. Divorce yourself from that past and recognize the main truth. He's with you because he wants to be. Like I said, we're in the golden age of fuckboys. People are ghosting their spouses. If you think a dude is with you and he doesn't really wanna be, you're wrong. If he's there, it's because he wants to be. So that means if he wanted to engage in the whole life, he still could. There's plenty of girls who are gonna answer that dick pic Snapchat. There's plenty of girls who are gonna be a friend with benefits and then twist herself into a knot. There's plenty of people out there who are willing to play that part. He doesn't want that, that's why he's with you. And that's what makes me feel hopeful about Justin and Haley. Like if he wanted to still go be a hoe, oh, he's got plenty of gas in the tank. Girls will still line up for Justin Bieber, but he wants to be with her and wanting to be there really is so crucial. And it really is going to fuel him into a level where he is capable and worthy of being with our angel baby turtle dove, Haley Baldwin. I want to know how you guys have overcome dating a fuck boy, a past fuck boy, you know, and like getting comfortable with his past. And the next video we're gonna do is how to get comfortable with your past. Stay tuned, click like and subscribe. And like I said, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO where I let you weigh in on this video topic. You gave me amazing suggestions. If you have a love question of your own, find me on my website, shallonlester.com and click get help. See you later, Shalloners.